What's up guys? If you like my channel and you want to help me grow, go ahead and push that subscribe button below. If you want to get future notifications for my videos, go ahead and push the little bell. A little picture of it right there. And if you want to see my algorithm get boosted uh, to help me along further my adventure on YouTube, please push the like button. It definitely helps. And if all else fails, push the like button because this guinea pig is cute. That's a good reason to push it, right? Right. Here, man, I've been changing the plugs and wires, but just to show you what kind of mechanic I am, I've tracked down every single issue the car currently has. As you can see, it's running pretty darn good. However, there are things I've noticed. Number one, this has a bad PCB valve. PCB valve starting right down here. Right there, if you can see the PCB valve, it is in between that knuckle. And that wraps around the back of the motor, but if you'll notice, PCB valve is collapsed. See how that whole line down there is collapsed? The vacuum has sucked in on itself right here, so that whole line has shrank and collapsed. That means the PCB valve is bad. That's going to have to be replaced along with that whole line. But, I'm assuming the guy got rid of this car because it was idling really bad. So as you can see, I've already changed the plugs and wires, but as I assumed, because the PCB valve is bad, which is PCB valve, positive crankcase ventilation, uh, it caused the... Uh, valve head cover gaskets to go bad. So whenever you have cloggage of the PCB valve and it's got nowhere to relieve that pressure, that, that uh, positive crankcase ventilation, then what it does is it always blows out the valve head cover gaskets and then you start leaking oil like a sieve. So naturally when I pulled each one of these spark plugs out, each chamber was completely full of oil, which I had assumed that might be the case, but since I've emptied the oil out, you can see the engine barely has any shake at all. When I first got this thing, man, this thing was like... It was rattling around pretty bad. So, valve head cover gaskets, uh, positive uh, crankcase PCV valve, and new hose. And this time we're going to put some fire liner on it to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Air conditioner is working flawlessly. Uh, timing belt, seems, the engine seems to be in timing. It just was running really rough because there was oil in each one of these. And I'm talking like that much. It was overlapping the top of the spark plug. So each one of these was arcing, causing power loss of the engine. These are very simple fixes, guys. I mean, I've been working on cars long enough to know that a very simple few things can solve a, a lot of major car issues that you think you're having. So in this scenario, uh, it also popped a DTC code for mass airflow sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the uh, mass airflow sensor and also popped a TPS code, which is throttle positioning sensor, which is right there. So I'll end up replacing both of those and I think this car should be working pretty good. I think it was a good deal considering uh, my investment so far was $27 in plugs and wires and uh, a PCV valve and a PCV pipe, which was 13, so $22 and uh, the uh, mass airflow sensor was $16.99 and the TPS was $8.99. That's, that's all we're in for right now. Other than that, this uh, Z-Tech motor's running very good. There's no ticks, no knocks, no nothing. So DW, the mechanic, doing his thing. It's been a while since I've had a fun little project car to restore, but as you can see, this thing is running primo. It's barely got any kind of shake to it at all now. Boy, when we got this thing, it was just rattling around like crazy. I was like, oh my gosh. But anyways, with the rattling also came an engine mount. So there is uh, at least a lower engine mount that's going to have to be replaced, but that's nothing. That's really nothing. That's just jack the motor up, pull the rubber grommet, put the new one in, and then done. So very simple. But other than that, it's, uh, it's running like an absolute little champ. Sounds good. It's nice and quiet. There's no misfiring. Engine seems to be in sync now, so we know all the issues. We're going to go ahead and knock all those out, and DW will sell the GP. I needed something gas efficient that needed just a little bit of work to get it back on the road and I think I think we got a winner. So and I got the radio working. Not wonderful, but I'm gonna show you in a sec what radio I went and picked up. So air conditioner's blowing nice and cold. Yeah yeah. But as you can see, uh, the radio wasn't working when I got it, so I stuck a couple nails in here and I went to pull out the dash and all of a sudden it started working again. So however, as you can see all the screen the screen is like barely there, so there's obviously something wrong with this deck. But I'm gonna take you inside and show you the deck I picked out for this car so we can have a little bit of fun and we can new age this vehicle a little bit. So other than that, man, it's uh it's pretty clean. A little stain on the floor, the side's pretty good shape. 
all the dash, everything works, all the uh, cruise control, all of it. So I think we got a good deal. It just needs a tad bit of work to get her going. And, and I've been without a window for so long. Check it out. Boom. Oh my gosh. You have no idea how good this feels to be able to put the windows up and down. Uh, the GP windows broke. Well, they were broken when I got the car. So yeah. So that, that is a major plus having working windows. And I can actually adjust my mirrors uh, now because mine didn't do that either. So I think we got a plus. I think we got a plus, a little bit of work. She'll come together. Let's go check out the radio deck I bought. For it. So it's not a DVD player. It's an MP5 player. This plays no discs at all. But it is pull-out. It is touchscreen. It is Bluetooth. It has an uh, awesome little pull-out screen here. Boom. Nice little touchscreen, 7-inch display. Okay, focus in. Come on, focus. Oh my gosh, you just don't want to focus today, do you? There we go. Um, brand new. Uh, comes with a nice little remote. You can plug in up to a 500 gigabyte uh, USB storage device. Play all of your media files, movies, everything through here. Um, it also came with an awesome little backup camera. Believe it or not, this whole setup deck and den and everything was... Uh, I think $84. I didn't want the automatic one that comes out and goes up because those fail all the time. I wanted one that I could just, once it's mounted, it'll be a lot easier to pull this out, but I wanted one I could just pull out, push down and put away without the worry of failure of motors or seizing or any of that stuff. This allows me just to push it down real quick and put it away, pull it out when I'm ready. Full touch screen, radio, plays all MP4 files, all MP3 files, all the media FL, uh, VLC files, FLV files, AVI, all that stuff. I can immediately finish my flight and it has a micro SD card slot right here. I can immediately finish my flight, pop it in and go right to video and then watch rewatch my flight right in my car. So I thought this would be a nice addition to the uh, DW family. It'll also new age the car a little bit. Uh, a lot, a lot, let's just say a lot. It'll new age the car a lot. This basically has all the newer technology of new cars right in here, GPS, all the fun stuff. So I figured for $89, it was pretty hard to beat that. I already have tested this unit. It works flawlessly. And like I said, a little backup camera if I decide to hook all that up. So I'm sweaty, it's hot. DW is having a lot of fun getting this car prepared for uh, everyday use, so. I'm a mechanic, man. I'm a hobbyist and a mechanic. This is what we do. All right, so that's the update. I have not been flying much. I'm working a lot, so I will keep you guys updated and let you know how things are going. So, all right, to you.